Well, hey everyone, and welcome back. Today we're talking about the geologic time scale, which is incredibly important to anyone who wants to have a basic understanding of geologic history and how the planet of and how our planet Earth has been shaped over time. So this is mostly going to be an introduction, and one of the most important things to talk about is the hierarchy that geologic time follows, or the way that we've structured it. Um, so most importantly is what we call eras. And one thing you have to take note of is that eras don't follow a specific sort of pattern. Um, they're broken up, in fact all geologic time is broken up not just based on some uniform, it's not like how when we tell time we break it up by hours, minutes, years. Geologic time is broken up by how much stuff has occurred over a certain period of time, right? Um, and you'll see what I mean very quickly. But um, for now, what you should know is that an era is the um, largest uh, piece of geologic time that we have. Um, or the era is going to be at the top, and then several other subclassifications are going to follow within it. So we have three main eras. Those are the Cenozoic, the Mesozoic, and the Paleozoic. Now, these all occur, I guess I'll give you their times. The Cenozoic is the one that we're currently living in, it is present day. It began 65 million years ago. The Mesozoic began 250 million years ago and ended 65 million years ago. And then the Paleozoic began 542 million years ago and ended 250 million years ago. Now of course one of the first things you notice when you look at this is you say wait a minute, the Earth isn't 542 million years old, so what came before this? Well, this is, this is really what I meant by when I said that geologic time is broken up by how, it, how much interesting stuff occurs within it, because, and I'll probably talk about this more in a future video, but the p beginning of the Paleozoic is marked by the Cambrian period, in which we had the Cambrian explosion of life, the Cambrian explosion as it's called, um, in which we had our first life and we had major developments of life. So that's really when the interesting stuff, that's when um, life appeared, that's when um, atmospheric conditions were rapidly changing. So the Paleozoic marked our first period of much greater change um, in the Earth, right? So everything before that we usually call Precambrian. everything before the Cambrian period. And that can be broken down into eons, eras, um, epochs, and ages as well. But for the most part, it's largely just when the Earth was a lifeless uh, sphere floating out in the, in the cold, dark space. Um, but you heard me use some other terms in there, so let's talk about some more specific classifications following eras. Um, you probably heard me mention the Cambrian period. So yes indeed, directly below the eras we'll have periods. And there's, there's a varying amount of periods within each, uh, each, um, each era. I think the lowest amount within any single one is three. Um, but yeah, those are like Cambrian, Jurassic, Triassic, you know, I can't name all of them off the top of my head, but um, there's some pretty notable ones. So there's periods, and then below periods, there are epochs. 
which are generally much less important. Um, sometimes you'll hear people not even go any further than periods and they'll just describe upper periods such as the upper Cambrian, the lower Cambrian, or the early or late Cambrian. Instead of going further into epochs and then below epochs we have ages. Now I'll probably go into more detail on some of these specifically, um, maybe look at important turning points in geologic history, um, but for the most part that's the hierarchical structure. It goes from eras to periods to epochs to ages. For the most part, the Precambrian is just sort of a mess, and uh, geologists frequently just lump everything that occurred before the explosion of life into that single category. But yeah, that's generally the structure you'll see the time scale following. There's a whole bunch of different ways of representing it. Um, I'll probably put in a little picture just so you can see it. I don't know, you've probably seen it before, um, but I'll throw it in at the end of this video just just in case this is a bit confusing to you, because really visual representation does a whole lot of justice um, for this. It makes it a lot easier than just talking about the words. But yeah, that was an introduction to the geologic time scale. Eras, periods, epochs, ages, broken up by how much interesting stuff occurred. Um, sort of think of it as the density of interesting events um, will determine the length of that period or section of geologic time. So hopefully that was informative. Otherwise, good review. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you all in the next video. Ciao. And say that, okay, after a certain amount of time, the energy that we have accumulated would be equal to the net amount of change that has occurred to the Earth in order to get it to today. So let's just say this is at time t, where the Earth is today. Astrophism, let's say it's 